Welcome to No Cover TV. I'm Jeffrey Janae, and I'm here with Johnny Moresca, local horror YouTuber and horror fan. Johnny, how are you doing today? I'm doing alright. How are you? I'm doing pretty okay. Pretty okay. <laughs> um, so this is our first interview with a local filmmaker. Um, we're trying something different. We're going to branch out to local filmmakers and filmmakers in general to um, interview them and see what their life is like. Um, so, Johnny, are you ready for the first question? Hit me. Okay. Um, so what got you so interested in horror? Um, well, it's, it's, it definitely isn't one thing. Um, my, first, my very first job was uh, working at a Halloween store. And, um, like, that first year, I worked it a couple of years, and that first year I, I genuinely did not enjoy like the Halloween environment. I was raised super religious, and so out of high school, I was still kind of shaking off a lot of that. You know, uh, you know, evil spirits are bad, sort of a deal. So, uh, but it was the second year that I went back and um, was working the Halloween store, and we had different sections. You have the men's section, the women's section, kids section, and you know clowns and then there's like the horror movie section which you know includes freddy jason michael you know it's just a, a random day and i just happened to be walking past that section and i just like looked at it and um i don't know i i looked down it and something clicked and i was just obsessed and i went down that aisle and looked at everything and i was like i for some reason am now in love with all of this and I went out and bought A Nightmare on Elm Street on Blu-ray and Friday the 13th and just started going through all of these you know iconic movies and and that was I was about 20 then so ever since then I'm just uh, I can't get enough. What was the first horror movie you ever saw? So, the very, very first, like, I would say traditional horror movie, um, you know, not Jaws or Jurassic Park or anything, but, like, straight straight up horror would be the 2003 uh, remake of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, I went camping with a buddy of mine, and we had um, one of those little portable DVD players, and we mm -hmm. had it hooked up uh, to my dad's truck, and um, we were sitting in the bed of the truck with the little DVD player sitting in front of us in the woods and we just watched this totally graphic, horrifying movie and I had never seen anything like that before in my life. Like I said, I was raised really, really religious growing up and had a very limited amount of uh, content that I could watch. And so I was about, uh, I think I was about 14 when I saw that. And I just remember uh, laying in the tent with my buddy and my brother and just being mortified, expecting to hear a chainsaw in the distance. And uh, uh, that, you know, while it was would be a few years before I got, you know, really, really into horror, uh, that definitely left the lasting impression on me. So. And on that, so, like, what would you say is the scariest scene that you've ever seen in a horror film? That is a very, very good question. Um, it's hard for me to say like what the, the, the scariest film like I've ever seen because I just think it, it affects you differently. Um, you know, the older you get, you know, something wasn't as scary as it used to be. Um, I would say that no matter how many times I watch it, uh, Marge being eaten by the shark in Jaws 2 is absolutely horrifying. Um, and uh, Pazuzu in The Exorcist scares the hell out of me, even to this day. Like, I've made peace with it. There was a, there was a legit time in my adult life where I was having nightmares about Pazuzu mm -hmm. and feeling like... Um, uh, I was 
being watched in my house and I was pretty sure that like it was Pazuzu trying to trying to you know possess me mm-hmm. and uh, and you know I don't have that that problem anymore but just those little you know uh, subliminal messaging you know with the the demon face and the exorcist I just think is so creepy and so well done yeah it was Honestly, I had seen that movie twice before I noticed all the little face flashes. <laughs> and I think it was the director's cut or something like that. And I had to pause it. I was like, holy shit, was... Did I see that? I had to rewind it. And I'm like, holy shit, there are faces there. I've never noticed those it's when before. she's walking through the kitchen and it, like, pops up it just yeah. in, in the frame. And you're like, what the hell was that? Yeah. Why? What, who would do that? Uh, and that, yeah, is it is exclusively in the director's cut. Yeah. Because I remember, like, showing it to a buddy of mine, showing him the, just the, the, the uh, theatrical cut, and, like, waiting for that moment, like, being super excited, oh, and it never came. There. And I'm like, okay. oh, no. Yeah, it's, uh... Huh. Well, maybe that's what it was. Maybe I watched the theatrical cut first, and then yeah. went and bought it. Okay. All right. Um, so on the scariest moment in a horror film what's the greatest horror film that you think is out there uh by and by the best horror movie ever made for my money is john carpenter's the thing without a doubt um it is horrifying it has great practical effects it deals with not only like the monsters themselves um but it also deals with the monster of humanity and you know how we get when we are scared for our lives and what we're willing to sacrifice um and i i think it with uh with (laughs) with the uh the exception of um some sort of you know spiritual uh um, aspect to it, it takes off just about every other box uh, from a from a, a horror movie perspective. There's gore, there's monsters. Um, it's legitimately scary, you know. Uh, yeah, I think it's just without a doubt the the best of the best. My parents actually are coming over tonight. To, to borrow some horror films because it's like it's October now we got to watch scary movies and my wife has never seen the thing and they've never seen the thing so I'm gonna like we're gonna do a big family viewing and I'm hyped because I remember uh, two years ago I went uh, I hung out with my friends and they had never seen it before and they were like Jeff you have that right I'm like yes on laser disc let's go oh my god let's bring out this thing and we'll plug it into your TV and we'll watch it and it was so fun watching all their reactions. Like, just the first time you watch it, they're just, like, freaking out. And I totally agree with you. It's the best movie, horror film. I love showing people that movie for the first time. Actually, my, my buddy, um, my buddy Brian, uh, we always talk about that movie, but he hadn't seen it for a couple of years, and he came over uh, just this, uh, this past weekend and uh, watched it. Um, watch it with me uh, after he hadn't seen it since he was a teenager and it was it was a lot of fun to go back and do that and I think there I even did a video uh, one of my videos in my first season is watching it with my sister for yeah. her first time viewing and yes. that was that was a lot of fun your uh, your third season just started coming out for your uh, mm-hmm. YouTube series and um, yeah I wanted to ask you a question about your dog um is your dog dying with you because like he's in the or is it he or she i see he yeah he's in the other levels of hell with you like when you guys were hopping through all those different he's there with you guys yeah so is he dying or is he like a demon or what that's uh something that that's totally i'm gonna leave that up to the viewer um (laughs) i will say that there is Something coming up in, I think it's, I don't, it's not the next episode, it's the, the, what would be the fifth episode that might have a little bit more of a definite answer, but as far as I'm concerned, he's just, you know, he's there, it's that, you know, 
thing that we kind of talk about where like the normalcy of hell is kind of what makes hell hell because everything that happens outside of you know the normalcy is so insane that um you're like this can't be happening sort of a deal and i think that he just ties into that normalcy you know you wake up in the house and you're not sure if well did i just have a dream uh, mm. was all that just a dream and you know you're walking around the house you're like oh everything's normal and then everything's back to normal and you know the sky is blue and the grass is green there's my dog and ah oh, fuck i don't have a dick yeah. uh, so i i think that lends itself and to be honest a lot of times you know having him be able to just be in the house instead of if i tried to lock him in a room he'd end up barking so we just kind of you know got got stuck with him but i'm always happy every time i see him on screen so yeah, it's a it's a good little yeah yeah i, I Fun totally agree thing. with you yeah um so on on that like how how did you build your version of hell like i noticed you guys mentioned dante's inferno the nine different levels of hell and stuff but you guys have a lot of different levels uh, uh, so how did you come up with your version of hell pure desperation you know uh my hands fully being tied and as far as what i a had the time to do and the money to do um which which is you know almost nothing i can't you know at the time we've branched out a little bit with effects and being able to you know do uh kind of do a couple of cool things with lighting and um use a little bit of green screen here and there i mean don't get me wrong it's still shoddy as fuck but mm -hmm. uh we've been able to dabble around in that and uh i've been very pleased with the the you know things that we've been able to do in that regard but when we decided that you know when i decided that brian and i were gonna be in hell uh early on in the second season, I hadn't really done anything like that. No effects or lighting or anything like that. And we're all just kind of making it up as we go. So it was just a matter of like, well, I can't make, you know, hellfire and, and you know, orange sky and everything and have it look believable at the time. So it's just, we're in hell but it's the the easiest level of hell, which is, you know, hell on earth and, you know, there's demons and vampires there, but they look like people because, again, you know, budget. Yeah. So uh, from there, it was just a matter of, well, if we're going to kill these characters time after time, there has to be some sort of stakes. There has to be some sort of cost otherwise there's not going to be any drama involved mm -hmm. so that's kind of where we came with the the level scheme and uh definitely obviously use dante's inferno as a jumping off point um we talk about that in the show but i just thought particularly in the second episode where uh we just keep on dying uh that it would be really really funny if we went from you know levels 9, 10, 11, and 12 to level 2013 or something like that. And yeah. you're just like, oh my god, guys, whatever you're doing, stop, please. Yeah. You're not doing yourself any favors. So that's kind of where we're at with that right now. And I want to say I love the double cardio level. <laughs> that one, uh, <laughs> that one when we did our viewing game. party, that one got a pretty big laugh, so... With your show, you said like, or in the second season, that's when it kind of started to turn into um, like more so short films than it was reviews. Was that something you had planned on uh, very early on when you started your show, or it was just like, all right, I'm kind of bored of the reviews. Let's try something different. Well, basically, you know, there was there was a time years ago when I I mean I've always wanted to to make film in some regard ever since I was a little kid and I was pretty good with it up until high school and then uh, I stopped and 
for a couple of years I didn't do anything. I didn't make any content or anything like that. It was just basically like, it's not going to happen, give it up. And I got super duper depressed during those couple of years. Um, and really towards like the tail end of that, I was really, really depressed. And my buddy had told me uh, for a couple of years, you know, start doing a blog. Just talk about movies, review them. And that's kind of how, that's like how the Johnny Horror Show started. Um, it was just a blog and I talk about reviews and they're more or less, you know, what I do now. They're just not, they weren't as interesting. And so uh, from that, I decided to do uh, some video reviews because that was something that, you know, obviously I liked and I thought I might be able to, to do. And I did a lot of the, the talking head stuff and it was, you know, it was fun, but it, like I always felt, and I still do feel that like in order to set myself apart, I need to be, uh, over the top because I I don't know how many movie reviews you watch on YouTube but I watch a couple and it's usually just a guy talking yeah and yeah, yeah. I, I hate watching movie reviews because they're always just so boring I hate doing them myself I would love to do them and I've done them before it's just it sucks to edit and it's boring as hell to watch and nobody wants to watch it like you bring an extra element that makes people want to watch it and I, I think that's the, um, what's special about your content. That's what keeps bringing me back. Well, I appreciate that. And that is the goal. I mean, particularly with the reviews, it's don't just be a guy talking. Yeah. Be a guy fucking selling a show. It should be... I want my reviews to be as entertaining as the thing that I was reviewing, basically. Yeah. Um, or, you know, in that same ballpark. Uh but essentially what it came down to is my buddy Nick, who was uh, the guy who told me to do the blog originally, he is a fitness instructor and was asking for a help with uh, uh, to do some sort of horror-related um, video with, with the workout program that he had. And originally it was going to be him teaching me how to do it, and that was going to be kind of funny in itself, but... Um, I just happened to get, uh, my buddy Brian was interested in doing it, and, um, and I really like that fish out of water thing, and it let me kind of fall into this role of this, you know, arrogant, booze, drinking, smoking, kind of douchebag of a character, and let Brian kind of be the audience mm -hmm. in this, like, well, what the fuck is going to happen next and that um that episode of uh johnny and brian kill a guy which was originally titled something like how to survive a horror movie using fitness um it, it a not only is that the springboard for pretty much everything that has happened in our show since um but it worked best and it was the most fun out of everything that I had done up to that point. So um, that's kind of where that led into. Uh, basically, Brian and I have really good chemistry and people, I felt like the people who were interested in watching wanted to see more of that. So that's kind of how that lended itself to that. And Brian has always been super gung-ho about doing this, always, uh, has a lot of fun and is always down to come back for more so that's why we've kept doing it the way we've been doing it basically um, and I think on the flip side of that people who might not be as interested in our shenanigans uh, do like listening to my reviews so um, you know I feel like that is a, a you know, I think my reviews are like a gateway drug to the Johnny Horror Show, so someone might watch, you know, a review that I did for, you know, uh, The Lighthouse, um, and then be like, whoa, what the fuck does this guy, what else does he do? And then hopefully that leads them to the to the actual show. So. Yeah. I think it was the first episode in the third season, when you guys switch bodies? It's yeah. the first episode, right? Do you guys dub over yourselves, or was it the whole time you guys trying to do each other's voices? Uh, so it's that that 
Jeff, that, that episode was a bitch, man. <laughs> I, <laughs> because I watched the mouths move, and if you guys are dubbing over yourselves, that's really good. That's really it, good ADR right there. <laughs> it is a combination of a couple things. Um, uh, it is me doing the voice for, mm-hmm. you know... Uh, for in Brian's body and vice versa, we both you know did our own voices. We didn't ever try and you know <clears throat> do each other's voices. Um, basically, it's we would film it uh, as ourselves and then film it as each other and try and mimic the performance. And while a little bit of that worked, it mostly didn't because it doesn't matter how much you're watching the other person do it like there's little ticks little beats that you just can't time out well Mm -hmm. enough unless you're staring at them doing it so uh i mean a lot a lot of it i would say i would say probably about 30 percent of it i was able to piece together from stuff that we had done when we when we filmed it the day of Mm -hmm. and then the other 60 percent was uh uh, dubbing after the fact Mm -hmm. and trying to get the same sound because you know if you like even record it in the same room uh in the same environment and everything with the camera set up in the same place but if it's you know two months later for some reason it still doesn't sound the same so trying to get that all synced up uh took a very, very long time. I am very pleased with how it turned out, uh, particularly the um, the uh, dining table sequence where my sister's talking to us because, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's flawless. Like, And that's the scene that it needed to be flawless because mm-hmm. there's nothing... There's no action taking place. It's just three people talking. Yeah. And it, it sells. It... it plays so well and I'm I have no idea how we we got it to look that good but I'm I'm very pleased with how it turned out. Oh, yeah, it looks good. And that that's another thing that is great about your your content is like your attention to detail to a lot of things even in your like super short videos you spend so much time like getting the costuming right, doing the makeup effects and stuff like that and it's it all I I just watched a two minute video and it's like the production quality is way better than anything I would see anywhere else for just a short amount of time, you know. So I really appreciate the like attention to detail that you guys put into it, you know. And I appreciate you noticing that. I mean, really, kind of what what that comes down to is. I mean, I, I'm a perfectionist, um, and I just don't want people. That's part of the reason those three episodes from season three took so long to put out because I don't want to show somebody something unless I am 100% proud of it. Um, but the other side of that is, you know, we're not dealing with, we, we shoot on a cell phone and I edit with iMovie. So, mm-hmm. um, everything else has to be as good as I can get it because we're not really working with, you know, high tech stuff, right. you know, so. So what are what are some challenges you've had while filming your show, just in general? I know you guys um, had to shoot around the Thomas fires and, of course, uh, shooting around COVID and stuff like that. But um, what were like some of the biggest challenges you've had during your show? Um, well, <sighs> time and schedule is probably the biggest thing, um, just because you know. Um, my friends do this solely because uh, they know how much it means to me, oh. and um, uh, and while I do try to feed them and give them booze, um, you know, post shoots, um, I don't I don't really pay them, so uh, you know, they're always so willing and so down to try and make it work with their schedules. But, I mean, we all are, like, you know, full-time, you know, we're full-time jobs, and, you know, uh, now a couple of us have kids, so just trying to bounce around that is, without a doubt, the hardest thing. Um, 
season three, the hardest thing uh, was dealing with Brian's hair um, because he decided he was going to grow his hair out, and I told him he could, but I just had not thought about how long this shoot was going to take, so if you just watch the run, uh, you don't have to watch it that hard. You can just see at the start his hair is short, and by the end it is very, very long. Um, but, uh, you know, that, it's, there's always, you know, big shoots and there's a lot of stuff that I have to try and keep in my mind. Personally, for me, the hardest thing is I'm not a great actor if I don't have, like, solid direction, and it's really easy for me to spot out issues in other people's performances to try and bring, bring those up. Um, but it's harder for me to do that for myself, mm -hmm. um, to give myself time because I'm always like, all right, yeah, that's fine. That's good enough. You know, we can go from there. Um, whereas everyone else will be like, no, I, I think we can get that a little bit better. Why don't you try it again? Sort of a deal. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's probably my number one thing that, you know, I think is hard is just trying to get the best performance out of myself because when I go to the editing room I'm usually more frustrated with my performance than I am anybody else's mm. but that's just you know comes from trying to do all the things at once you know yeah and you said you were a perfectionist too so I'm, uh, I'm the same way it's always like even when the video comes out I'm like yeah it's good but better good but better. But, yeah so I get always. I get where you're coming from for sure yeah. So do you intend to continue your show for further seasons, or are you trying to wrap it up? Because I know you guys are on the bottom level of hell right now. I would say that ideally there is more to come. Um, and again, this is always like all based around everyone's schedules, everyone's lives. And so um, I know how the show ends. Um, and I know more or less everything that happens in between. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's definitely going to be more seasons, uh, after, after this one, should we, you know, Make cross that happen. bridge, basically. Uh -huh. Yeah. So do you, you have plans to create short films outside of the show? Or, because I know you, you had made a post a while ago about the, like, Johnny Horror podcast, stories, and uh, clips. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So, um, yes to all of the above. So, basically, uh, I already started the Johnny Horror clips, and that was basically just a, a chance to put out content for people that was a little bit more accessible than, you know, a 10 to 20 minute video. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of our, our earlier stuff is um, pretty accessible. It's like five to 10 minutes, but the past couple of videos that we've released have been like a full blown TV episode. Yeah. So um, the Johnny Horror Clips is essentially just anywhere between, you know, 10 seconds to two minutes, basically just a little bit of something that, you know, people uh, have a little bit little bit more uh, access to. Don't have to sit down and watch a whole thing. Like that one. The Johnny Horror Podcast, I believe, uh, I gotta double check with my guest, but I do believe I'm filming that, uh, or uh, recording that tonight, um, the first episode. Um, and that is, uh, uh, fuck is honking. <laughs> Um, don't they know what's happening right now? They never do. <laughs> it seems like always when we're filming outside, airplanes. Yeah. Just constantly. Like, Where the fuck are all these airplanes always. coming from? <laughs> we'll be like filming. We, we, I remember we were filming something in the garage, like, you know, at my old house. And it was right next to the pool. And any time we'd go downstairs to film something in the garage, there'd be kids playing in the pool. And kids playing like, in the what pool, yeah. Or it's quiet and the refrigerator starts making ice for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> like, right, right uh, and it's the take that you're like, this is the one. Yeah. This is the one. I'm feeling yeah. it. Uh, but, um, yeah, the Johnny Horror podcast is, the, the, the idea was just like, 
I don't know if you've listened to any of like Eli Roth's History of Horror, if you're familiar with that at all. This is the one on uh, Shudder, right? Yeah. Okay, I have not gotten to that yet. I'm like Q, but... It is a great watch. It's an even better listen because, like, while the the show itself has all these interviews diced up and is talking about, like, the, the different, uh, you know, whatever that, um, you know, segment is about, uh, the podcast itself just has the extended, uncut interviews with whoever... Uh, he's interviewing, like, I think the most recent one is Jamie Lee Curtis. I haven't listened mm-hmm. to that one yet. I'm really looking forward to it. But, you know, he has Stephen King, Quentin Tarantino, all these big people, and they just sit and talk about horror movies. Mm-hmm. And when I kind of had finished uh, the podcast up until that point, I was like, I want more of that. Mm-hmm. Like, and, like, even this, just sitting here talking with you, I'm having so much fun because we're just talking about horror movies and stuff like that and so that's basically what that that uh show will hopefully be is just me having my friends on to just talk about horror movies and stuff like that Mm -hmm. um the johnny horror stories is gonna be something a little bit different i'm thinking um i do a little bit of writing from time to time just just like short stories and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and um i'm fairly good at that at least I like to think I am Um, and I always have all these things like all these ideas flowing around in my mind and so the Johnny Horror Stories uh, will hopefully um, be something that happens within the next couple of months hopefully uh, before the year is out uh, basically having um, my short stories be like audio stories Um, and uh, with that in mind yes hopefully down the road uh, the Johnny Horror shorts, which will be short, short films, short films basically. Gotcha. But uh, that's probably a little bit down the ways, um, just because if I'm going to take this much time and effort to film something, it's probably going to still be the show. Mm-hmm. So that's where I'm at with that. Okay. And uh, last question. Your content... Obviously, it has to do with horror. Horror has a lot to do with the paranormal. Um, do you yourself believe in the paranormal, like ghosts, uh, even cryptids or stuff like that, the unknown? Oh, I definitely believe in the unknown. Um, I'm pretty much where where my belief in that stuff begins and ends is that I think there's other dimensions that we haven't quite cracked. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I couldn't explain any of it to you or why I necessarily think that. I just, it is the only thing that kind of makes sense in my mind as to why strange things happen that we can't explain. Um, I do believe scientists have said that there's other barriers and stuff that, you know, we haven't quite been able to uh, hack into and everything with time and space and black holes and all that shit. I'm, I'm, totally believe it's all linked. I highly doubt we're the only ones in the universe. Um, but at the same time, my brain is way too small to even try and comprehend things like that. I'm mostly just focused on, you know, day-to-day life. And when something creepy happens, I'm usually just like, well, that happened, you know? And, uh, I try not to, try not to dwell on those things because I'm already a fairly anxious person and then putting, you know, Right, to find out that Pazuzu exists. Yeah, it's not doing me any favors. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, well, that's where we're at now. Um, This is Johnny Maresca of the Johnny Horror Show. His uh, third season has just started airing uh, on YouTube. You can find him at... The Johnny Horror Show. On YouTube and uh, Instagram? Yes, sir. Any other places? Uh, those are pretty much the main ones. Yeah, that's pretty much... A, I mean, I got a Twitter account, but I don't really use it. So. Mm, gotcha. All right. Uh, his content is super great. I've been watching it uh, for a good while now. He takes a lot of time with his uh, videos and puts a lot of care into it. And he knows what he's talking about because he watches a shitload of horror. So go check him out. Um... And we'll see you, hopefully, another time with another review with another filmmaker. Thanks, Jeff. Yep.
Hopefully that went well. I mean, there are a few hiccups here and there, but you got all right. Always fix it in post. Thanks, man. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Was it? Okay. I'm I glad did. I didn't bore you. I know. I, I, no, I, I'm the only person that I really ever get to talk to about stuff like this is Brian, and Brian has lived it all with me. So it's it's fun to to sit down and talk about the show and. You know, have someone like you be genuinely like interested and curious as opposed to like people who are like, oh, it was really good. Yeah. You know, like, you didn't watch it, you hack. Yeah. You're lying to me. Yeah. Um, so that I appreciate that. Great job, Brian!